The next epic frontier of space exploration is Mars, but getting there is still an elusive challenge. Dan Riskin has been doing a deep dive into what it would take for W5's unlikely journey. He is our guest this morning. I'm glad to see you here, not up on Mars. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, and congrats on the W5 piece, by the Thank way. Thank you. Yeah, very excited to work with that team. They're, they're rock stars, so it was a lot of fun. As are you, so nice to see you there. The central <laughs> question to this piece is whether or not it is possible for humans to reach Mars. We do movies about it. There yep. are right now billionaires in a space race spending hundreds of millions of dollars. What's the verdict? Well, you know what? It's, I thought it was a technological problem. If you look at all the missions to Mars, less than half of them have been completely successful. We, we make all these mistakes, but it turns out that the good old human body is really the sticking point. Human body does not like weightlessness. And so when you put a person in a spacecraft and you don't give them any gravity for six months, it doesn't matter that they exercise for two hours every single day, they come back as though they've been lying in bed the whole time. And so, you know, when David Saint-Jacques came back from six months in the International Space Station, he had to be helped out of the spacecraft. Who's going to be waiting on Mars to help people out of those spacecrafts after mm -hmm. their six-month trip to get there, never mind sticking around? Uh, you wanted to really thoroughly involve yourself in this piece, so you actually went into an anti-gravity machine. An artificial gravity machine. Artificial gravity machine. Okay, I want to give people a look at what your experience was yes. and then find out from you firsthand. Working in that environment will take lots of training, as it is nothing like life on Earth. The strangest part is if I do the slightest movement of my head, everything gets super dizzy super fast. Okay, so what was happening to you there? What were they doing? It's like a merry-go-round, but there's no horses. It's just a room that spins. Oh. And so it's... I, I thought it was just going to be like, okay, it's spinning a little bit, you lean forward, and then everything feels fine. But because you're rotating, it just, gravity is constantly going in different directions, so you're fine if you stay totally still, but if you do this to look at the person next to you, you want to barf immediately. Oof. And if you take a tennis ball and try to throw it in a straight line, it goes off to the side, because it's going straight, but you're spinning. And so I got this appreciation that, you know, you can't just strap a spinning piece onto a spaceship and expect people to just go for a run around the ring every morning and everything's going to be fine. It is artificial, and gravity feels weird, and it's going to take a huge amount of effort to adjust to that. Uh, so so whether that's a feasible option for people on their way to Mars as a way to give them a little bit of artificial gravity became a giant question mark in my head once I experienced it. Okay, I'll push back a little bit, and I know you're a scientist, but people also said, that, said the same thing about going to the moon. Yes, and there were different challenges for the moon. For the moon, it was like, can we build the thing that will get them there? But here we're going up against the limits of the human body, and there are a lot of things we don't know about the human body. So the great explorers right now are people like astronaut Scott Kelly, who went up to the International Space Station for a full year, David Saint-Jacques, the Canadian record for longest space flight, 204 days, six months up there. And they're basically just turning their bodies into puddles so that scientists, themselves included, can see what that does to the body so we can try to come up with solutions. Because it's relatively easy to build a spacecraft that can handle things, but it's very hard to fix the human body when it doesn't want to do something. You are a scientist. You've been covering space stories for years. Uh, did this change your thoughts about Mars? It really drove home how hard it is. I really, but going into this, I was like, yeah, we'll get to Mars. It's just like the moon. But now I'm honestly not so sure. It's a tough, tough challenge. Don't tell that to Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Riskin, thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, CTV W5 airs tomorrow at 7 o'clock Eastern and Pacific. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.